The following is a DW Holy Saints production. Saint Gregory the Great was the Pope of the Catholic Church between 590 and 604 AD. An Anglican historian stated, It is impossible to conceive what would have been the confusion, the lawlessness, the chaotic state of the Middle Ages without the medieval papacy. And of the medieval papacy, the real father is Gregory the Great. Early years, from 540 to 574. Gregory's birth took place around 540 in Rome, which had recently been reconquered by the Eastern Roman Empire from the Ostrogoths. He was born into a prosperous noble Roman family that had strong connections to the church. His father, Gordianus, held the prestigious positions of senator and prefect of the city of Rome. He also had a role in the church as a regenerius, although not much information is available about that particular position. Gregory's mother, Sylvia, came from a respectable background and had a sister named Pateria, who was married and lived in Sicily. Both his mother and two paternal aunts are revered as saints in the Catholic and Orthodox churches. Gregory's great-great-grandfather, Pope Felix III, belonged to a time when clergy members were not bound by celibacy vows. As a result, Gregory's election to the papal throne established his family as the most distinguished clerical dynasty during that era. The family resided in the suburban villa situated on the Celian Hill in Rome. Their villa faced the same street, now known as Via di San Gregorio, as the former palaces of Roman emperors on the Palatine Hill. The northern part of the street led to the Colosseum, while the southern part led to the Circus Maximus. During Gregory's time, these ancient buildings were in ruins and privately owned. The area was mostly covered with villas. Gregory's family also owned productive estates in Sicily and in the vicinity of Rome. Centuries later, John the Deacon described fresco portraits of Gregory and his family, which were found in their former home on the Celian Hill. According to the description, Gregory's father, Gordianus, was tall with a long face, light eyes, and a beard. Sylvia, on the other hand, was tall with a round face, blue eyes, and a cheerful expression. The family had another son, but there is no information available about his name or fate. Gregory was born during a turbulent period in Italy. The plague of Justinian, which began in 542, spread throughout the empire, including Italy. The plague led to famine, panic, and even riots. In some parts of the country, more than a third of the population perished resulting in profound spiritual and emotional effects on the empire's inhabitants. While the Western Roman Empire had already vanished, replaced by Gothic kings ruling over Italy, Justinian I, the emperor of the Eastern Roman Empire, based in Constantinople, gradually regained control of Italy during the 540s. As most of the fighting occurred in the north, it is likely that the young Gregory had limited exposure to it. In 546, the Gothic king Totila sacked and abandoned Rome, causing significant destruction and loss of life. However, in 549, he invited the remaining survivors to return to the empty and ruined city. It is speculated that Gregory and his parents may have retreated to their Sicilian estates during this interim period before returning in 549. By 552, the war in Rome had ended and a subsequent Frankish invasion was defeated in 554. Italy enjoyed a period of peace and restoration, although the central government now resided in Constantinople. Being born into a Roman society's privileged class, Gregory received a comprehensive education. He excelled in grammar, rhetoric, the sciences, literature, and law. According to Gregory of II, France, he was unparalleled in grammar, dialect and rhetoric. He had a firm grasp of the Latin language, but was not proficient in Greek. Gregory was familiar with Latin authors, natural science, history, mathematics, and music. 
His knowledge of imperial law was so extensive that he might have received training in it as preparation for a career in public service. Indeed, Gregory pursued a career in government and quickly rose through the ranks. At the young age of 33, he became prefect of Rome, the highest civil office in the city, following in his father's footsteps. After Gregory's passing, the monks of the monastery of St. Andrew, which he established at the family's ancestral home on a Celian hill, created a portrait of him. Centuries later, John the Deacon had the opportunity to see this portrait and described Gregory as a man who was somewhat bald with a tawny beard resembling his father's. His facial features were a blend of his mother's and father's with a high forehead, a thin and straight nose, and subdivided lips. He had a prominent chin and the sides of his hair were long and carefully curled. In modern times, Gregory is often depicted as a figure straddling the borders between the Roman and Germanic worlds, between the East and the West, and representing a bridge between the ancient and medieval eras. 